The Five Steps to Peace, Love, and Joy. I am open to the evolution of my soul. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My next step is here and now. I'm calling this the five steps to peace, love, and joy, but it's really about spiritual mind treatment. Now, I know you practitioners know all this and all of you that have taken class, but as I was thinking of this, what subject I should talk about, I thought lots of times we throw around words any organization does. We understand what the words are, but I'm thinking how many new people come in and we say, oh, we'll treat for you, or come on up after the uh, service and have a, a mini spiritual mind treatment. You know, we know what we're talking about, but how clear is it? What was strange about this to me is when I first thought of the subject, I kept saying, oh, no, that's a simple subject. Most of you know about it. And I kept thinking, i got to think of something a little more clever. But it kept coming to me. So as I get on Facebook, which is where I get a lot of my news, I hate to say, I saw all the other ministers, I shouldn't say that, all of them, but a lot of the ministers on my Facebook were talking about the spiritual mind treatment. And I just thought, how powerful was I? Not really. There is a few of our centers, several of our centers, that follow a theme throughout the year. So this is the theme for today, spiritual mind treatment. <laughs> so here we are. So here we are. And like I said, I know that uh, practitioners and people have taken classes. But, you know, I like to review some things sometimes, too, because I forget or I sort of take it for granted. So what is a spiritual mind treatment? Now, it is one of our tools in this teaching, and I think it's probably the most important. I'm going to say that. Now, first we have to understand that we teach here that there is a law, that one aspect of God is, is a law, and it's a law just like electricity or gravity. It is a law that we speak into, and it responds to us. Just like you plug a plug into the electricity, and electricity does its thing then. We don't have to even question it. But our belief systems and our, and our makeups seem to make it a little more complicated. But the first step is we have to study that and learn how that works. And what it means that the more we embody a belief system or an idea or a new dress, if you notice in that little video we had, the more we embody that, we put that into that law of mind, and it responds with, good, yes, I will do that, and you may have that new dress or whatever it is. Now, Ernest Holmes, our founder, was asked, is spiritual mind treatment a prayer? And his answer was yes and no. Yes, because it is we, what we call an affirmative prayer. It is a way of praying in the affirmative as though we already have it. It is already done. It is not a prayer because it's not a prayer like I used to do, which was a beseeching, begging, please God, please, I will do anything if you please answer my prayer. That's the way I used to pray in my teenage years. And that was okay because that was my idea of God at that time. Someone up there in a long row, flowing hair, that would answer my prayers if I was good. If I was good. Now, the God we talk about now is actually a presence. And we are one with that presence. So it's all around us. It's in us as it's through us. It is that presence that we live as in. 
that as we embody it and know it and put it into our belief system, the more we can have a, a conscious control of our demonstrations and how we live our lives. Now, the thing is, one thing I always have to say is that 90%, I heard it was 95, now I heard just lately it was 90% of our belief system are unconscious. So that's what makes it a little more difficult for us sometimes to say, well, I want more money. How come it isn't showing up? I've treated spiritual mind treatment. I've prayed. I've done all the things. And that's why so much of this teaching is an individual type of contemplation because we all come from different backgrounds and there are beliefs let's say for example around money that we don't even know consciously we have and that's true about everything thank you i love that you're confirming what i say keep doing that <laughs> go up like that if, it, if it's not right so anyway so we have to we have to uh really do a lot of contemplation. This is a teaching that is not something you can come into and just say, okay, I got it. I could have done that 25 years ago because I thought I did get it. I became a minister about 20 some years ago. I thought I had it. More and more I'm finding, ooh, there's so much more to uncover in my daily practices and stuff. So spiritual mind treatment and learning how to use it and accept it because we all can do it. it is, this is a tool that's just like prayer, like I said, affirmative prayer that we all can use. I use it daily. I start my day out with meditation and spiritual mind treatment. I have prayer partners that I also ask when needed for affirmative prayer. The, pr the definition of prayer, and I love this as I was <coughs> looking up some quotes from Ernest Holmes, our founder. He says, a prayer is a movement of thought. Remember what I said, it's in our thinking and in our body mind. So it's not just one thought, it's who we are that really has the demonstration out there for us. This is what he says, prayer is a movement of thought within the mind of the one praying. So it's in our mind, it's not in someone else's mind, it's in our mind along a defining line of meditation that is for a specific purpose. That's Ernest Holmes' definition of prayer. Now, I was raised in my early teachings in Science of Mind, that we could be specific. Now, some disagree with that, but I actually believe in being specific. You'll notice in her treatment, in the little skid up there, that it actually pictured that dress she wanted. It's okay, because we're doing the, we're doing the requesting. So it's okay to be specific. Be as specific as you need to be. See, this is where this is individualized. Some like to be specific, some don't. I like to be specific. I was taught that you don't call Sears and Robux and say, you know how old I am then? You don't call Sears and Robux and say, uh, just send me anything you want. I don't care. Of course, now it's Amazon. I'm an Amazon person, but you know what? I'm very specific. When I order things from Amazon, I get the size and the color and really what everything I want. So when it comes to my door, don't you love that? It comes right to my door. I have what I ordered, exactly. Now we can do that in spiritual mind treatment too. And we can be not specific. One time I've had some and I don't take credit for doing the treatment because it's part of, of, of the law. So it's really just part of the law. I wanted a new car with no payments. It demonstrated. I have done for people, and like again, this is not about taking credit, it's just about doing a treatment, who wanted a house, and they were gifted a house. Specifically, they had the idea and everything. 
So it works. We can be as specific as we want. If it's a new dress that's pink and blue or whatever color Ashley wanted, she can get that. Or we can do the other thing and say, peace, love, and joy. I'm into this a lot. Peace, love, and joy, that's why I named this. But sometimes we have to know, what does peace mean to me? What does love mean to me? What does joy mean to me? There we can get some of the specificalities. But I can treat for peace. I think that's the great, one of the greatest things to, to treat for. So, here is how it works. Again, from Ernest Holmes. Since the law is mental, and as I said, this all happens in your mind, not some out there, it all happens in your mind. Since the law is mental, one must believe in it in order to have it work affirmatively for him or her. But it is always working according to our belief, whether he is conscious of this truth or not. Demonstration takes place through the field of the one universal mind. That's what I talked about, this law. It's called universal mind. We have several names for so many of our stuff. <laughs> so it can get confusing. But universal mind, the law, it's all the same thing. We set the power in motion. We set it in motion. The, mo the law produces the effect. So one of the tests is to see what you're thinking, to look and say, what do I believe? Look at your life out here. Sometimes that's not easy. But that is, if you really want to start working this, and it works, believe me, it works. I don't think, I don't even think I'd be here if I didn't have this teaching. Anyway, it works. But you do have to do some studying, and you have to do some contemplation to see what is your belief system. But we can always say, just look out here. That's your belief system. Now, this is not meant to be in judgment, because that was one of the biggest things I had to get over with, because I thought, oh my God, I must be so terrible. I must have, not have this consciousness of prosperity. What's wrong with me? Now I say, isn't that interesting? <laughs> I have a belief system that I have not uncovered yet about money. Or what, you know, I mean, it's an example. What is it? And it takes some time in meditation, or for me too, is to have a practitioner that you work with on a continuous basis because that's what the practitioners do when you have sessions with them is to have you, they don't do anything, but they support you in uncovering what are some, some of those belief systems that are in your unconscious that you don't even know are there, but you know it by looking at your life out there. So this is the rest of the Ernest Holmes quote. We plant the seed, and the law produces the plant. So that's Science Mind 1. <laughs> that's Foundations class about the seed. We plant the seed, and we plant a tomato seed with our thought, right? And we don't go back and dig it up and say, OK, I changed my mind. I, I, I don't want that seed, even though you planted a tomato seed to grow. And, and keep watching it. We trust that the soil, which is the universal law, this is Science Mind 101, that it will grow. So spiritual mind treatment is a tool that we use to facilitate this change in consciousness. This change in consciousness. So that you're demonstrating those uh, experiences in your life that are peace, love, and joy. So, we teach here, in this teaching called Science of Mind, we teach five steps. Now, it's, you know, positive or, uh, prayer can, can, affirmative prayer, of course, can be any way. But I think with the five steps, because I still use them when I do treatment, they make sure that I am in the right order for me. So I recommend this, probably not other, 
uh, new thought, teachings have other ways of doing it. But I think it's all the same. We've just broken it down, which makes it easier for some of us. Now, the first step is recognition. Now, what I have found that many times, each time I talk about a step, I think it's the most important. So I guess all five of them are important. But this is where you start out. Now, recognition is describing to yourself so that you get into that place of what your belief system is about the one power, the one presence. That power that created everything. So the first thing is to go into your belief and stay in that first step until you really get that feeling of peace. Sometimes you'll see a practitioner, you can almost see their body as we do prayers up here sometimes. That all of it, they've got it, you know. They, they took the time, and this is what I ask you to do too. Take the time. Now, I've sort of thought that we all do this, whoever we pray to. Do some of you remember the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> Our Father which art in heaven. That's like the first step. I mean, that was the God I prayed to at that time, a father figure up in the heaven. But that's okay. That's who, that's who I, I was with. And that's okay. So in this first treatment, I mean, step in treatment, in this teaching, and what we teach here is that there's only one, and it is a power greater than we are that we call forth to demonstrate our experiences in our life. And so this could be one sentence. Some of us, as practitioners and ministers, have beautiful words. They flow, they can describe the creator of the universe, the creator of all who we are, everything. Some of us may be a little shorter in words. It doesn't matter. The words are important only as much as your belief in them and how you are embodying them. We're using embody a lot now, I noticed lately. But I think that's right because it's not just the words. It's not just the feeling what is your whole self believing? So that's the recognition. We we'll recognize that power, whatever it means to you. So take time when you're doing a treatment, spiritual mind treatment, and of course I call it for treatment for short, many of us do. Take time for that first step. Take time to really think about what do I believe? I believe this universe is good. I believe it created everything, myself included, but the stars in the universe. I believe that it's prosperous, infinite prosperity. I believe it's health, perfect health. I believe it's love, peace, and joy. I actually believe it is these, these feelings or how you can describe it. So that's the first step. So you want to take time. I'm going to be rushing this a little bit again. <laughs> Univers unification. This is one that I am one with it. There's no separation. I am one with it. I love to describe this as the ocean, and I am the face. So when I go out there and, and put my face into the ocean, I am all the ocean in and as me. That's how I sometimes have to picture things, you know, out here in order to really get the picture for myself. We are one. There's no separation. We have been created to express the spirit, whatever you want to call it, individualized as who we are. So we're all individuals. So because we get to create our lives, our individual lives. And that's what we've been created to do, my belief is, to come here and create the most magnificent lives for ourselves. Thank you. Now, to start out, which I sort of uh, skipped over, we usually say a purpose. When we want to do a treatment, you know, it's like Sears and Roebuck, I don't care. 
do whatever you want. No, we have the power to direct this law. So before we start treatment, we want a purpose. Now, a purpose could be that beautiful dress that Ashley wanted. You know, that was if you saw the picture. She had recognition first. Then she had the unification. The next step is the realization. And that's where we want to state what we really want. So before we start our treatment, we sort of start contemplating. What do I want in life? Do, do I want prosperity? How does that look for me? Do I want a loving relationship? How does that feel? Do I want a new dress? Yeah, why not? Let's go for everything. You guys want a new suit? I don't know, whatever we all want. <laughs> so we get our purpose first, and we define it as much as we can. Now, for me, if I can't define it, that may be fine. But if I can't define it, and I know there's something missing, then I might do a spiritual mind treatment for clarity or willingness. I had an issue with my mother, and I treated her all the time for 60 years. Didn't work for me. One day I said, how come this isn't working? I believe in this, I'm a minister. I treated for willingness, and do you know it was instant? My relationship with my mother changed instantly. So for me, I had some, something that was keeping me. But when I said I was willing, so sometimes it's just being willing. Are you willing to receive lots of money in your checking account? Are you willing, you know? Are you clear? Are you clear? Some people come to a minister and said, I want a million dollars. This is a minister. And he said, your consciousness isn't ready for a million dollars. Let's start out with 10,000. Something that your consciousness can grasp and you can truly believe in because you can always extend it. Now, you could wish for a million dollars and your consciousness may be right there, so go for it. But if you find some resistant, okay, I have to hurry along here. Easy. Thanksgiving, we all know what that is. We give thanks, we are grateful for as though we have already received it. Because we're talking in the affirmative as though we have already see, see it and have it, whatever it is. I give gratitude for this knowledge of this law that I know that works. I give uh, gratitude for, for what I have, the abundance of what I have in my life. And I give gratitude for a tool that I can use to move my consciousness. The final step, the fifth step, is to release it. Let it go. You know, you've, you've, you've said your idea, your thoughts, your words, your feeling into this law, and this law responds with a yes. So allow it to respond to you. So you just release it. Release these words, for they, it is already done, as I have spoken it. Release these words, because I say these words into this law, which always responds to a yes. And so it is. And that's how we finish our treatment, and so it is. So really quick, I have clocks up here, if you remember last time. I have a watch. <laughs> My friend back there, Jasmine, put a clock there, but there's no lights today. Okay, so I'm going to hurry here. Why use practitioners? Okay, use practitioners, please, I beg of you, because I don't think we use our practitioners enough, mainly because you have to come to them, maybe you'd have to tell them some things. But they're supporting you. And I know for me, whenever I, have a, whenever I have something that I want to change in my life and I can't release it, that's a, sign, that's a sign to me that I call my prayer partner. I have a prayer partner for 25 years. Just saw her up in Seattle last week. So I know when to call someone when I can't release it. And you know what that's like. You release it, but you say, oh, yeah, but what? Yeah, but what? You know, as soon as you see yourself doing that, get a hold of it, someone else. Because what I find, and I had, uh, uh, 20 years ago, I had cancer, and I had three months to live, is what the doctor told me. So 
I was in this teaching. So I tried to treat. I couldn't treat. I was too busy. I don't know where it was. <laughs> Scary. But anyway, I had a, I had a practitioner. I asked, so every time that my mind would come up, oh, I'm scared, or what should I do? I just said, I have someone treating for me. So that was my release. So if there's something serious going on with you, please talk to a practitioner. They can really help, and they can uncover things with you that maybe that you're having some challenge with. Okay, fast, fast, fast. Okay. Ernest Holmes has been asked, how long do you treat? You treat until your demonstration is demonstrated. So if it's every day, some of it could be once. If it's every day, do whatever it takes. Keep believing it, keep doing it. Talk to a practitioner. It really works. Please, I've been in this 30 years now, and I know it works. And so it is. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Okay, okay, now's the time to give, to give, to receive. Uh, giving to me is a trust that I know that I'm trusting in the universe to support me. So hold it in your hands as we read uh, our statement here. God is the source of all supply. Money is God in the action. What we give, we receive, multiplied abundantly. All that God is, I am.